Hello and welcome to The Bike Show. This week we come to you from the Yamaha Lifestyle Centre at the Gordon Road off-ramp of the N1. There is plenty of Yamaha action later in the show, but we're going to kick off with some orange bikes. I'll let Donovan and Harry explain. <laughs> This is KTM's 1050 Adventure. It's been built to comply with European legislation for learner riders. And that means it has a V twin engine that produces 95 brake horsepower. You see, KTM is the one manufacturer in the adventure bike market that has championed stratospheric power outputs and more computer power than NASA. And yet here is a bike that completely bucks that trend. What's even worse is that it has none of the electronic trickery that KTM is so well known for whatsoever. And this could be a bit of a problem. Shouldn't we just ignore it and cross it off the list? Or is there more to this bike than meets the eye? And what are we doing at a racetrack? If I could interrupt for a second, gentlemen, Donovan, um, I think I've just asked actually a very pertinent question. We're on an adventure bike and we're at a racetrack. I oh, hope you got an explanation. It's, it's so obvious. We have two guys who are expert at KTMs and are fantastic riders. One is Bue Levy, he owns a bike shop in, in Clarkstorp called Moto's KTM, and one is Dave Griffin, he's at the famous Rad Moto. Now, earlier this year at Pekisa, they had an eight-hour endurance race. Now, Pekisa, it's a MotoGP track, and for his eight-hour endurance race, Bue Levy entered not a 1290, not an 1190, not even a superbike, he entered a 1050 that very 1050 over there. More so, uh, earlier this year they had the LDBA, Low Felt Dual Bike Adventure. It's basically a trip where a bunch of guys take adventure bikes to Mpumalanga and throw them off cliffs and then ride them back up again. And again, Dave Griffin, good rider, knows KTMs, didn't take a 1290, didn't take an 1190, he took a 1050, this 1050. So what we're saying actually that there is really more to these bikes than meets the eye. There has to be. But now these don't look exactly nah, standard. They, they, they sort of are. A lot of this is down to the sticker kits, which is this race style graphics, which Grantia actually does. Quite convenient. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? You just put all, you just design stuff and stick them on and... Yeah, well, we make we make bikes look good and we personalize them, so... Okay, there and we, we make them look fast and fancy. Well, as I say, he doesn't think these are standard because they've got stickers on them. Well, <laughs> apart from the stickers, from what I believe, it's just a pipe and a few bolt-on things. Yeah. And well, these have two, they've put, they've put two silencers on them. Mm. And apart from that, okay, that one, the Motors Clarkstorp one, has wheels. You'll see that it came standard <laughs> with well, all wheels. bikes have wheels. Well, yeah, they do have wheels, yeah, but those ones have spoked wheels. And any adventure rider will tell you that it, if it doesn't have spoked wheels, it doesn't have wheels. However, those wheels on that bike were actually put on because they're wider. They're often an 1190 not because of any off-road prowess, just so that they'd be a bit wider, so they have more traction around the track. Yeah. Whereas Makes this sense. one over here, basically, they have these crash bars, which bolt straight off an 1190, straight onto this, and yeah, otherwise they're ready to go. Well, then I think we should stop talking so much rubbish and, uh, well, get these on the track, and then he can get it on the dirt and crash and kill himself. Obviously, oh, let's go. Fantastic. <laughs> This is fun. We're riding around a track on adventure bikes. Much like these bikes weren't designed to do. Now remember, we haven't put special tires or anything on for this. No, nothing. This bike I'm riding now is stock standard as you buy it off the showroom floor. And you've got guys who spend hundreds of thousands of rands prepping their super bikes to do exactly this. I'm not saying we're going to break any lap records, far from it, but I think we're having just as much fun, to be honest. Knee on the deck. <laughs> now remember, these things, although they make less, ten, less cc's and things, below 6,000 RPM, follow exactly the same horsepower curve as an 1190. So below 5,000 RPM, we're basically riding at 1190. Not like we're keeping much below 6,000 RPM here on this track. Also, I'm thinking of back to Bike of the Year. 
about two or three weeks ago. And now we have the 1290. Now the 1290 has a mumble of an engine. That thing is spectacular. But honestly, compared to this bike, it feels like a truck. This thing is just so light and nimble. Uh, Superbike riders keep saying that midval is too bumpy for superbikes and that it's no dangerous. I don't feel any bumps at all, mate. That feels fantastic. So, as a simple and relatively underpowered adventure bike, the KTM 1050 is quite a good track bike. But how is it actually as an adventure bike? Time to take it off-road. Now, Midball has been kind enough to build a flat track, a proper one, except it is in that flat. Although it is much like what your average adventure rider would ride on, which is good. Now when I'm riding on a track like this, it reminds me of my favourite thing, which is a dongle. One of my most favourite things, a dongle. Oh, oh, it is nothing like a good dongle. Especially in this case, right now a good dongle is really good. You can buy them for about a thousand rand, a dongle. What it does is it plugs into your KTM connector and every time you start the bike it leaves it on the settings you prefer. Which means that every time you start the bike you don't have to turn off the electron turn off all the different electronic stuff like the traction control, you don't have to turn off the ADF. When you start it, it's already off. Unlike the standard bike, which you do. Now Grant and I started this track at the same time and I was following him in the form of a dust cloud, which was there for about 10 seconds and then it disappeared. This ball wasn't good enough to only have a flat track, they've also got a motocross track. Shall we go take a look at that then? When I first got here, I felt like a mixture between Mark Comer and Ryan Dungey. And then I looked across at Grant on this motocross track, and suddenly I felt like Cinderella with only one shoe. Honestly, can't imagine doing this. Well, it'll be hard to do on an 1190, because it's a bit heavier. On a 1290, I can't see it at all. Then again, if you gave it to Grant, he'd probably still go flat out. He'd probably beat most motocross riders on it. But that's Grant. What's interesting is that this bike is 140,000 Rand. That's the price of an 800 Tiger that came second to Bike of the Year. And that bike feels small, it feels like a small bike. This feels like a proper sort of big bike. Now after an entire day of superbike riding around a track or off-road riding or whatever, the last thing you want to do is get back on your uncomfortable superbike or back on your uncomfortable off-road bike and schlep it all the way home. However, these are a little bit different. Well, that's very interesting. We seem to somehow have overlooked KTM's 1050. How have we managed to do that? I mean, it is a brand new model. It is a brand new model, but the problem is it was overshadowed by the 1290, which is all singing, all dancing, bells and whistles. So it just kind of snuck in underneath when everyone was looking at the big one. And Donovan, you proved with your test that, I mean, adventure bikes, we tend to pigeonhole them as this is it, they're allowed to do adventure and that's it. But there you were, tearing around a track. I mean, um... I keep saying that what the adventure bike is eventually going to do, kind of like the X6 and all of them have done to, to the sports cars, is that the adventure bike is eventually going to take over from the superbike. Because nowadays they do most things a superbike can, and they're comfortable, so... It's actually a big model for KTM. You think about it, its natural enemies aren't really the other big adventure bikes, are they? Because I think the biggest thing, the biggest kept secret, is really the KTM's price. It's like 140, it's 140 grand. It's the same as the Triumph Tiger 800, it's the same as the Suzuki V-Strom, okay, that's the 1,060, but it's kind of fighting below its weight, almost. Yeah, and you were mentioning, Don, that what's really interesting is that effectively you are, engine-wise, as long as you don't really rev it, you're kind of riding an 1190. And, and before 6,000 RPM, it is an 1190. It's a very lightweight 1190. And when you're riding it around town, as I think we found, you never really go above 6,000 RPM. So what you are doing is riding a cheap, uh, very light 1190. 
There you go then, the KTM 1050 is an absolute unsung hero. Don't do what we did and overlook it because you'll be missing out on a properly good motorcycle. After the break, something very silly and something very dangerous. We're going to take in what was held in Pretoria recently, basically the Freestyle Motocross World Championship.